What's popping in the streets, everybody? I believe therefore I am King Silo. Hope you're doing all right today. You can already see the title. We're not even gonna waste any time. Desert Storm 4 Battle Predictions. Everybody else has been doing there, so it's only right that, of course, the king does one. Um, it is what it is, but before we even uh, get started, please make sure that you like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Working towards my goal to get to 1,000, 1K subscribers to the channel. Any like, any comment, any subscription or subscribe helps me get closer and closer to my goal. So please, by all means, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Uh, big shouts out to the Dead End fam and everyone on the entire team that went into putting this uh, this amazing event together. Looking at some of these battles, we got to be quick on this one. There's 25 battles and we ain't got no time to waste. So let's go ahead and get into it. But again, hit that subscribe button. Let's go ahead and get into it. So. These are obviously not in the order that they, they came, but I just scrolled all the way to the bottom and wrote my way up. So first battle that we have, Ruin versus Knucklehead. Very, very, very interesting battle. Um, and it's actually really a big surprise that I've never seen these two matched up before. Um, looking at this particular battle, uh, I am, in my personal opinion, looking at this, this does seem like a very, very well um, balanced battle. Um, looking at these two, they don't really have any like distinct weaknesses or anything like that. Um, as far as like, you know, somebody saying like, oh, neither one or Ruin doesn't have any level changes. There, there's no, there's nothing like that. Obviously, both of them have those, both of them have material, combos. Um, they have a variety of, of skill sets in which they, they both bring to the table. So I definitely think that um, when looking at this particular battle, like we are definitely in for a hell of a match. Um, now, as far as breaking it down, I will definitely say that in looking at it, I do believe that Knucklehead, aka proof for some of y'all, if y'all don't y'all seen the flyer or not, but um, I definitely think that Knucklehead is a much more um, character-based in my personal opinion. Um, kind of looking at like a lot of the creativity that he does bring, just in case the cat's not out of the bag. Um, we do obviously know that he has a lot of strong influences from anime, so I think that kind of contributes to the clarity of his movements. You know, we've seen him, you know, do some hand signs and stuff like that from Naruto, um, do some portals and stuff like that, which does kind of help create um, a good storyline whenever he is um, uh, executing his movements and his combos and his material and things of that nature. Um, Ruin, on the other hand, I do know that he does have a style and a character, but I definitely think that it's it's not as in-depth, in my personal opinion, as what we see with Knucklehead. Um, now, the benefit that I do see as far as for Ruin is that, obviously, he's a much more um, explosive and powerful dancer. Um, when you battle Ruin, you need to be at your absolute best because it is going to be one of those situations to where it's like, all right, Ruin comes out of the gate at 100%. I don't think there's ever been a time where I've seen him and he dances light or holds back. So I definitely think that's a big factor that plays into this particular battle, um, which does throw up the question, all right? We see that Knucklehead does kind of usually, you know, start off strong and then kind of builds the momentum as he goes on. But Ruin is one of those people to where it's like within the first five seconds, you know, he's up there. Um, hard hitting and explosive. Um, both of them are very versatile in terms of movement um, and just like simply like the way that they move is if we look at it, if we're just being real, uh, shouldn't be possible for two guys at these size at, at their sizes. But hats off to them. They, they make it look easy. They, they I ain't doing that, you know, so <laughs> uh, much shouts out to them. So I think looking at this particular battle, I'm going to um, I think I'm going to give this battle to ruin solely on the basis because it is going to be one of those situations to where I do believe he's going to come out the gate on, on Knucklehead because obviously he knows Knucklehead has no pushover. Um, and we've seen him in a lot more uh, high stakes situations on big battles and, and the experience factor is really there. Um, so in my personal opinion, if we see anything similar to what we saw when Ruin battled, I believe when there was a DC versus Kill Crump, if he's anyway on that type of level, I think it's going to be really hard um, to catch the momentum that Ruin will bring to this particular battle. But also at the same time, you know, Knucklehead can take this one by simply being a lot more creative. 
Um, I would definitely say if we look at it, when we do see Knucklehead, maybe because it is a lot more, his movements are clear versus it gives something much more eye appealing to the audience. Maybe he could steal it that way. Um, but in my personal opinion, I think Ruin's going to take this battle. But I definitely be this is going to be a, a really good one. So moving on to the next one, we have Jungle versus Pun. Um, another very similar battle um, with these two. Obviously, both of these cats are very, uh, very proficient when it comes to material, concepts, combos, very knowledgeable as far as for the foundation of Crump. Um, looking at this particular battle, the only real difference that I, I see uh, between these two particular opponents is the versatility of movement. And I would definitely say that it's much more versatile when it comes to pun. Um, so kind of like looking at this particular battle, I, you know, just you know, so that way I'm not beating around a bush. I do favor this particular battle for Pun, solely because of the consistency that we've seen from him. Um, obviously, we haven't really seen Judge uh, Jungle that much, so it is kind of hard for me to make a logical answer based off of something that maybe he had at the beginning of the year or maybe last year. Um, I, that's just not a good reason. Um, so looking at this, just based off of what I've, I've seen consistently, I would definitely have to give it to Pun. Uh, because again, like when you look at Pun, like he's not just um, a lot of uh, Jungle's moments are kind of up top. It's not that he can't um, use lower levels or use other uh, varieties of movements, but we've seen a much more consistency of movement and versatility from Pun. And I think that that plays a really big factor. And I do think that in terms of like when we look at um, other varieties, other things about it, like, okay, when you look at liveness, you know, who's going to be able to maybe push the envelope as far as for stamina, you know, based off of what I'm currently able to see right now, I'm favoring that as far as for pun. Um, now, one big variable that I do think is very, very important that sometimes people overlook is that we haven't seen jungle in a while. And I know sometimes when people haven't seen da particular dances in a long time, they are very inclined to be excited, you know, or they're easily swayed because it's like, oh, we haven't seen this in a while. And I don't like to blanket it, um, but it is kind of obvious and people have said it before. Jungle is kind of revered as the second coming of, of Solo, even though he is his own man. I don't, I'm just putting that out there, but the talk is that, you know, hey, this is the second generation of, of Solo. Um, he's very, very deadly, you know, when it, when it comes to his combos and material and, and it's this, in my personal opinion, this is definitely no easy battle in any way, shape, form or fashion to pun. Um, but I do particularly believe that pun just has a lot more tools at his disposal to use, uh, to fend off jungle. So looking at that particular battle, I do favor it. Um, um, I do favor it in regards to pun. Now, as far as for pun, we've seen him consistently so if he comes in there and if he kind of slacks off I lose so but yeah all in all I've, I'm in favor of a pun winning that particular battle then we have a uh, Trinity versus Taminator um, this is crazy bro. Y'all doing pretty damn good with some of these matchups but um, next battle Trinity versus Taminator um, this in my personal opinion when I look at this this is, seems like a dog fight to me um, respectfully calm down um, when I look at this particular battle, I say dogfight because this is gonna be kind of like, I don't necessarily see any real distinction between the two to where it's just like, okay, well, Taminator has much better ground game. Okay, well, Trinity has much better combos. I think that this is uh, a very, very close match for two very similar styles of individual. Um, I do definitely see that Trinity has uh, been implementing much more uh, variety of as far as character, as far as like her last battle at the playgrounds. And she hasn't been very active um, in the dance scene. As far as even involve herself in open style dances, I don't care what nobody says, being around a different genre or variety of dancers will always open your mind to new possibility and a different level of creativity. Um, so I have to give her credit for that. So we never know what she may bring to the table when it comes to battling Terminator. Um, and then when we look at Terminator, Terminator is obviously a, a seasoned veteran. Um, I don't know if people will acknowledge that across worldwide, but I definitely know she's a veteran in terms of when we look at Canada um, and definitely a heavy hitter across the world. I think she's definitely top five um, female crumpers in the world, my personal opinion. Um, so looking at this particular battle, um, 
The only real um, difference that I, I see here is that I do think that Trinity definitely dances with a lot more power. And I think once she picks up um, momentum, you know, she can kind of carry that for, for a very, very, very long time. We've seen that in a variety of battles that she's had in, in the last couple of years. So, um, but I think when it comes to Terminator, the big factor with her is that um, if you don't kind of get, obviously, the gist, you know, she's Terminator, Terminator, she's like a machine. Like, she doesn't waste movements. Um, and I don't think that she misses those opportunities to capitalize on those small movements as well. Um, so I think definitely when it when I look at that particular battle, I think that's the one particular part that's going to play a factor is that I've seen Terminator build around numerous rounds and then maintain that momentum throughout the entire time. Um, and I think that is something to say that, that goes towards her experience and her, her tenure in Crump. So looking at that particular battle, I'm going to go in favor of Terminator again, not an easy battle. It can go any way. Um, I do think that when it comes to character um, and stage presence, I do think Trinity has that a little bit better. Um, but I don't think that's something that Terminator, you know, cannot implement herself or, or she wouldn't be able to overcome. So I'm in favor of Terminator winning this battle, but we'll definitely see how that goes. Next battle, we got uh, Girl Tetris versus Princess Dead End. Now, Girl Tetris uh, is from Dallas, Texas, or Fort Worth, Texas, excuse me. Um, Princess Dead End is from Arizona, obviously. Um, this one's kind of a hard one because girl, uh, respect to both of them, but girl Tetris hasn't necessarily been really active um, as far as like dancing out here. I think I've seen her maybe one or two times dance um, and maybe in a year's time. Um, and I think the last battle that she had, if I'm not mistaken, was it King of the Ring last year? So, and not to mention we're in... Really, see, she's going to be in hostile tour territory. We're going to be in Arizona for this battle. Um, so I I don't know. It's a big stage, and she's going to have to execute. I know she's done two-on-twos, and she's done performances, but I definitely think this is going to be a real, a different challenge for her, in my personal opinion. Um, then when we look at Princess Dead End, um, I've seen Princess Dead End. Uh, the first time I saw her was when she was out here for the King of the Ring, um, and she battled. Um... This one's kind of tough because with all due respect to both of them, there aren't necessarily any things, particular things that stand out about them. I do know that Princess Dead End does kind of lead with a little bit more character. Um, not saying in terms of like she embodies like, you know, you know, Jack the Ripper or something like that, whatever the case may be. But in terms of like letting her persona, like who she is as an individual kind of lead. Uh, I think we saw that last year uh, when she battled um, Harlequin um, at the King of the Ring. So I think, uh, in my honest opinion, uh, I'm going to go in favor of Princess Dead, in, Dead End. Because if I'm just being real as well, I'm pretty sure that Dead End is not letting her slack. Um, yeah, and I'm pretty sure she's preparing for it. So obviously, I hope that Girl Tetris is doing the exact same thing. So we'll just have to see. But yeah, going in favor of Princess Dead End. Then uh, we have Gamino versus Quinn Cannon. <laughs> Now, this for me personally is a tough one because I do think this is a little bit of a style clash. And when I say that, the first thing that I, I definitely do acknowledge that they both have, um, and I use this terminology and I'll explain it, is very, both of these dancers are very Smash Mouth. Um, and if you look up the term Smash Mouth, it's very in your face, very hardcore, you know, kind of just like, just rough, you know, almost and this is kind of like a bully. Um, and obviously, you know, last year, uh, or was it the year, the year before, um, I did brand, um, in my personal opinion, Queen Cannon as the beefiest woman in Crunk. Now, depending on, excuse me, depending on how this particular battle plays out, I think it's definitely going to be determined by the first round. Now, when I look in or I kind of decipher this particular battle, I would give the character and creati or creativity to Queen Cannon. Then when I look at um, the ability, I would say fundamentally, um, and I know not everybody always has like their opinion, but again, these this is how I look at it. Fundamentally, and the ability to execute, I give that in favor of Gambino. Now, it's, it's kind of hard to just flat out say that, you know, oh, one, which one of these people is gonna win? Because when I look at Gambino, 
respect to him. But Gambino is one of those people to where when he gets into the battle, it's kind of, it's just like, forget all that pretty stuff. I'm just going to hand you just raw crumb. That's not to say that he doesn't have technical application or anything like that, but uh, I think Tada said it one time, which was a good way that he said it. He's like, there's some dancers that get in there and they don't care about, you know, doing a bunch of fancy stuff. It's just, just, um, just raw pain and just hardcore crump. Rest in peace him. I think that um, Gambino shares that with ER. Um, and I see that with a lot of other people, a lot of dancers as well. So I, I think he does kind of follow, um, in a sense, I guess if I can use that word lineage. Like Gambino is one of those people to where it's just like, hey man, I'm not, I'm not here to impress you. I'm I'm here to bury you. Um, so I do think that he does have like that ruthless ruthlessness when it comes to him. Um, but then also at the same time, Queen Cannon, in my personal opinion, is very cerebral. Like when she comes to battle, I think um, when we saw her previously a couple years, um, when, when I kind of reflect back to the resurrection. You know, in my personal opinion, she was a very different dancer. Um, you know, it was very hardcore, very powerful, very in your face and very beefy. And then when we saw her at, uh, you know, when she got under cannon, we saw an implication of creativity and execution and combos. Obviously, when we saw when she battled Zephra, you know, she remixed, you know, cannons, old school, you know, the ground move and stuff like that. So I thought that was um, obviously that that was a big component as far as like when we look at her crump. So in my personal opinion, looking at this, it is going to come down to the come down to the first round. Um, and when I look at this battle for the long haul, I would have to go in favor of Gambino. Now, I think and this is I don't always do this, but I think uh, ways in which like maybe the win can be secured. I think if Gambino does come in there with a game plan as far as like, I would personally like, you know, kind of like see him like if it's like, if he does come in there like with a heavy character um, influence, you know, like some real um, sharp and executed, you know, material or maybe even some combos, whatever the case may be. I think that he could definitely um, win that first round. It's going to it's going to force Queen Cannon to play catch up. Um, and then when we look at Queen Cannon, I think if honestly, if she's able to build off of, I would assume she has, um, time has passed, but if she's able to build the same level of technical application on top of her crump that she had when she did battle Zephra, um, with the same level of creativity that she brought in that battle, I think she could steal the first round. I think it just simply depends um, when we look at this particular battle, who does what first. This is definitely a chess match. Um, when it comes to these two, despite the fact that they are um, different in, in, in a lot of ways. So um, I'm not looking down on either opponent. This is the same way that I would kind of look at it if, if I were battling them. And these are things that uh, I think it's important for people to acknowledge. Um, everybody has a particular skill set and everybody capitalizes in certain areas that they feel comfortable. So, yeah. So, yeah, that's all I have for... Um, for the first five battles of Desert Storm, um, just kind of recapping it again, I got Ruin, Pun, Taminator, Princess Dead In, and Gambino uh, for my predictions for the first uh, section of the battles. So uh, that's all we got for the first one. Please make sure that you like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on all social media platforms. The information is right there for you. Catch you on the next video. See you in a bit. Peace.